Thank you, Mike, very much for the songs for this morning, for our time of together of worship and fellowship as we meet together today on this Lord's Day. Of course, a lot of folks are out of town this weekend, it being Memorial Day. And our lesson this morning thinks about that time, not in the physical aspect of what Memorial Day means, but the kind of Memorial Day that we as members of the body of Christ celebrate every first day of the week, every day of our lives, that we might not forget. The scripture that was read earlier this morning is our text for today. So if you have your Bibles, Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17, I want us to look at this passage again and think about what was read and what we are about to see again before our eyes. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, Now behold, I myself do establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that comes out of the ark, even every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, and all flesh shall never again be cut off by the water of the flood, neither shall there again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all successive generations. And then he says, I set my bow in the cloud, a rainbow. And I couldn't help as I thought about this lesson today and the preparation for it. The song that years ago, I remember the gospel heirs did. And I also remember Ted's group, the Sunrise Quartet did, when they went around congregation singing. There is a rainbow of love pointing to heaven above, shining through every cloud. There is a rainbow of love. And that's what the purpose behind this rainbow was all about. That's why God put it in the cloud. And set this as a sign of the covenant between God and mankind and the creatures of the earth. It shall come about when I bring the cloud, verse 14, over the earth, that the bow will be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of flesh. And never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the cloud, And I will look upon it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And then finally, God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And so we think about the Yes, for a moment we think about the physical memorials that we will honor and celebrate tomorrow being Memorial Day. It was originally, by the way, called Decoration Day just after the Civil War as the Union and Confederate soldiers were being honored for that terrible war that they fought that divided our country. We think about the ultimate sacrifice The price that was paid by those soldiers of the military. And we think about that tomorrow when those will celebrate Memorial Day at gravesides, services, other observances to remember those that paid that ultimate sacrifice. Flags will be flown, graves decorated, patriotic parades, services held to honor the fallen, and then a little time together with family. We think of Memorial Day as a day for picnics and barbecues and ball games and family outings and trips to the lake. 
But we think about also the physical sacrifice that our veterans have made. There was an article recently on the website of the VFW which read, Sacrifice is meaningless without remembrance. America's collective consciousness demands that all citizens recall and be aware of the deaths of their fellow countrymen during wartime. A memorial drawing minds back in the past to an event in which the observer did not participate, but which from he derives a benefit. And there are some assembled here with us this morning that served in our military, in the various campaigns and theaters across the globe. And for that, we thank you for your service. Well done. And we think about your friends and loved ones. But some of you soldiers had buddies that served that are not with us. And we are thankful for what they have done. But we also think about the spiritual memorials that God has left before us. The example we just read in the scripture a moment ago of the rainbow. And as time passes by us, we think of other great memorials that God has left for us. The great memorial of the brazen serpent, which as God's people were led astray and about to fall away God told Moses to set up a bronze serpent and put it on a pole and everyone that looks upon that pole shall be made healed. And that brazen serpent on that pole reminds us of Jesus and the cross. And we think about the great memorial that we read about in Joshua chapter 24 in which Joshua erected a memorial for the people. And he said to the people, for me and for my household, we shall serve the Lord. And that day, the people made a vow to, to Joshua that they would serve God and be faithful to God. But as we read in the next book, the book of Judges, the generations that passed those who briefly served God and then fell away, serving the things of the world. God is the originator of memorials and they are totally appropriate. We just read a moment ago, the first memorial being the rainbow. God put it in the sky as a remember of his promise not to flood the earth again. Oh yes, we see floods every year. We talk about and we hear about it in our news, but nothing of the catastrophic flood that destroyed mankind for his falling away from God. Rainbows still call, cause the, the people of God to fear him and to remember the consequence of sin and the promise to those who were delivered. When God rescued Abraham's descendants from Egyptian slavery, there was a memorial established. We think about that memorial as the Passover. In Exodus chapter 12, verses 26 and 27, the Bible says, and when your children say to you, what does this right mean to you? You shall say, it is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians but spared our homes. And the people bowed low and worshipped. God did not want Israel to forget the deliverance they had received. They never forget to observe the Passover. But then it suddenly became an empty ritual, a religious holiday, and the memorial didn't cause them to obey God. And then Jesus established a memorial of Christian deliverance from the bondage of sin. And we see that memorial as Christ hanging upon the cross. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 28. And while they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and gave it and gave thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And it was just mere days after 
he and the disciples assembled in that upper room and remembered this Lord's Supper that Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins. Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice. And I was very appreciative a moment ago of Jose reading the scriptures for us from God's word to remind us of what this Lord's Supper, this covenant, is all about. This is what we remember every first day of the week. This, to the child of God, is our Memorial Day. There are some things worth remembering, and it's appropriate to have a time set aside for remembrance and a, and a memorial to remind us. We think about as, as Americans, our freedoms. We think about the cost of that freedom. In Romans chapter 13 and verse 7, it's important that we remember those who paid the price for freedom. For God gave this freedom to us to use for His glory. As Christians, we should remember not only the cost of the freedom, but the cost of our deliverance from sin. We have done nothing to earn or to deserve deliverance from sins. But Christ went to Calvary. And though he, he told his father, though he told God there in the garden, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Christ fulfilled the will of his Father and went to the cross and paid that price for you and me. At one time, each of us allowed himself to be ensnared in the trap of the devil. We found ourselves in a condition from which we could not free ourselves. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 20, the Bible says, Indeed, there is not a righteous man on earth who continually does good and who never sins. In other words, we stood before God with no hope. No hope without God in the world. There were unavoidable consequences for rebellion for God, for our sin. The, low, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and the Lord will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. Nahum 1, chapter, chapter 1 and verse 3. And those that have rebelled against God, they have consequences to pay. Paul writing in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, to give relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well, when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That rebellion's consequences may not be immediate, it may not be the next day, but in time there will be consequences to those who have rebelled in time and in times past against God. And like physical death, spiritual death, the second death, the separation from God, is a condition in which no man can rescue himself or anyone else. He needs the help of Almighty God. Our duty is to keep the commands of God, but sometimes it's impossible to do extra to compensate for our failures. Jesus said in Luke chapter 17 and verse 10, when you do all the things which are commanded, you say, we are unworthy slaves. We have done only that which was our duty to have done. And the proverb uh, writer says in Proverbs 20 and verse 9, Who can say that I have cleansed my heart and I am pure from my sin? No one else can rescue us from our impending condemnation. Speaking of those here on the earth physically. No man can by any means redeem his brother or give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of his, old, of his soul is costly. And he should cease trying forever. Psalms 49 verses 7 and 8. We can't save our loved ones. 
only one thing is left. That is the precious blood of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that can pay that ransom for us. God's Son came to the earth for the specific purpose of rescuing man from sin. Mary was told in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21 that she would bear a son and he shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 45 the Bible says for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Only the blood of God's son can ransom sinners back from Satan's horrible grip. Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, the following. For there is one God and one mediator also between God and mankind, Christ Jesus, who gave himself, he says, as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. If you address as father the one who impartially judges according to each one's work the, uh, Peter says conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay while on earth knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver and gold from the futile ways of life inherited from your forefathers but with what Peter the precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless the blood of Christ 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 19. We are told in Scripture, we are tempted to turn back to live by the standards set by our society. But remember, what is our memorial? The cross of Christ. The blood that was shed on that cross. And the horrible price Jesus paid to free you from our sins. You can find all of that right here in the scripture, in God's wonderful word. And like the soldiers that we read about and we hear stories about who died to make our nation free, God has made the ultimate sacrifice to make us free from the bondage of sin. We read in scripture that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And it's that truth of God. It's that truth of Christ Jesus. It's that gift of freedom that God offers us to those who place their faith in Him. If you have your Bible still handy with, with you, turn over to Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. A passage that many of you know by heart. That you have memorized. But we read, of the tragedy of sin, the consequences of sin, the price paid for sin. We read again, Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. And we actually begin in verse 19 where Paul says, I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves, just as you used the, to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness. So now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading into holiness. And he goes on to say, down in verse 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Who has set you free and turned you from a slave unto sin? to a servant of righteousness, Christ and the blood of Christ that he shed on the cross. Man can do nothing to earn God's gift, but according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, he must accept it by faith. Again, remember the words of our veterans. Sacrifice is meaningless without remembrance. This is equality, true of the sacrifice of Jesus. And it must be thought of. It must be dwelt upon. It must be remembered. Knowing how forgetful we can be, the Lord left a memorial for us. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. And these were some of the thoughts that Jose shared with us as we were remembering the broken bread and, and the wine just a few moments ago. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this. As you see there. In remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You see how important it is, brethren, to observe this memorial every first day of the week. As we think about this physical holiday, it's only done once a year. To us as Christians and children of God, as we think about the cross and that sacrifice that Christ made on that tree, we do it often, every first day of the week. We eat the bread and drink the cup and proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That Lord's Supper reminds us of what we did and what Jesus did for us. He reminds us of the consequences of our sin. We must not forget the price that was paid for our transgressions. It's important that we gather around the Lord's table each first day of the week. We must never allow the Lord's Supper, the communion, to become an empty ritual of just taking of a cracker and drinking a cup of juice. But those are symbols that remind us of something special. Those are symbols that remind us of something greater, of that ultimate sacrifice. It is not in the performing of the acts that we approach God, but it's in the humble submission of our hearts before Him. As we come before Him in prayer and we are broken, we've come short. And we need the blood of Christ to cleanse us. And as long as we're walking in the light, as he is in the light, we have that fellowship. We have that blood which constantly and continually cleanses us from all sin. May we remember those things throughout our lives. And that ultimate price paid. Again, we're about to enjoy a physical holiday on Monday actually this entire weekend, thinking about the price that was paid for this nation's freedom, the price which was paid also today about the freedom from sin. Let us be grateful for the religious heritage in which we have been born into. And let us accept with joy the responsibilities that lay before us. As freedom was entrusted to us, we must pass it on to others. As others share the free gift of eternal life with us, we must pass that on. We must share that with others. As West Freeway was passed down to us, we must pass it down to others. And as the truth was committed to us, we must commit that truth to the generations that come on past us. We were talking about it this morning in our Bible class of some thoughts that Paul shared with, with Titus to the older men, to the older women in teaching the younger ones. And I think about the great sacrifices many of you have done over the years to, for this congregation in serving in the capacities that you serve. Some have served as, as elders, some have served as deacons. We have former ministers here in our congregation who have preached the word for years. We thank you for the service that you have performed. It is our job and is the job of everyone else to leave a lasting legacy 
to the younger ones that are coming up. That's why this move is so important to us at West Freeway in the days ahead. We're moving to a smaller location, yes, but that's going to be a great challenge before us. And we've got some outstanding and wonderful challenges that will be placed before us. What kind of a memorial or a legacy shall we leave to the generations that pass before us? We observe today Memorial Day to the child of God. We do that every first day of the week. Let us remember the cross. Let us remember what has been left before us and what we need to leave to others in the years and the months and the days ahead. This morning, there's anyone in this audience who has never named the name of Christ. You've heard the ultimate price he paid for you because he loves you. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be buried with him in baptism for the remission of your sins, like we've seen in the last couple of weeks. If you've never named the name of Christ, come this morning. This morning, there may be someone in our audience who has drifted away from Christ and his relationship with God and, and, and Jesus. I urge you to think about that this morning. And if you need to come in a public way, let us pray with you and for you. Or from where you are, just pray and ask God to help you in the days ahead to be a better example. If you need to fill out one of the cards this morning, do that. Our elders will be coming up the aisles here in moments and will be collecting those cards and will pray over those needs that you have. Or those prayers of praise that you might have this morning. Whatever is your need right now, come for and stand while we sing. Would you pray with me? Father, we remember. And in our memories, though sometimes those memories are a little faint, we find those who are loving. Those who did loving things for us. And Father, we have no better example than you and your son. Yes, our parents. Yes, our grandparents. Yes, those who have truly cared. We know that it's your love that came through them. For those who've passed, whether in fighting for our freedoms or whether in just passing of their life, living it fully and giving your love to others, sharing it with us. We thank you. But for your son, for our hope, 
for the future that you give us. To let your love come through us and help this world be a better place. Your will in all things, we ask. We also ask for safety. We ask for so many other things, but Father, safety for those who are traveling, safety for the spirit, the soul, the hearts of those who are being persecuted for simply following your son. Guard them. Strengthen them. Help them through the last moments of every one of our lives to know you. Have us in your hand. Again, Thank you. And it's in Christ we pray. Amen. God be with you till we meet.